What was the most petty thing an adult did to you, when you were younger? My aunt was unpleasant or weird with everyone but always particularly cold to me. One day when I was about 14 she took me aside and said she'd held a grudge against me because of my name. She had wanted to call her first daughter that name but my parents had had a child first and used it, they had no idea she wanted the name and aren't the kind of people who would have done it on purpose. She said she'd tried really hard and had just about forgiven me for it. I just remember being baffled by it and then feeling sorry for her for being that spiteful, to be honest, but it palled later in comparison with all the other crazy horrible things she did to her own family. My mom asked if I wanted to play 52 card pickup, while my friends were over. I asked her what it was and she said I either want to play or I don't. I told her I didn't want to play anything if I didn't know what it was. She got visibly irritated and threw the cards on the ground and said, this is 52 card pickup, pick them up. She then threatened to ground me as she watched me pick the cards up and put them away nicely. I think it was worse because my friends were watching. In Cub Scouts, we were doing the Pinewood Derby. I worked really hard on my car, my dad helped, of course. I had already won the first three rounds, and before the final round, one of the dads of the of the other kids picked up my car to hand it to me. It slipped out of his hand and broke the wheels when it hit the floor. I'm convinced it was not an accident, and he was sabotaging my car so his kid would win. This was over 30 years ago, and I'm still salty about it. On the wedding day of my mom's third wedding, I sat in my room alone crying cause it was hard, but I made sure to remove myself cause I didn't want to upset my mom. When my aunt came to check in on my and saw I was crying, she went and told my mom. My mom went out of her way to stop hair and makeup to come into my room for being selfish and trying to ruin her happy day, even though I purposefully tried to not look upset in front of her in the first place. I was feeling sick one day in grade 3 or 4 and the substitute teacher wouldn't let me go to the nurse's office because, I didn't look sick enough. I had strep throat. When I was like 9 or 10, I was rollerblading home from my mom's work, right? And I'm heading down 4th street, and I find something like $16 on the ground a 10, a 5, and single just laying there on the sidewalk next to some outdoor seating at a cafe. Being the obnoxiously nice kid that I was, I pick it up and kind up look around, wondering if anybody lost their money. That's when the lady in the weird sweater vest comes around the corner. We make eye contact and I tell her I found this money, and she goes, huh? Let me see it. And my naive ask is like, oh yeah, that makes sense. She's a asterisk grown up asterisk, she can sort this out. She looks around, hands me the single back puts her finger to her mouth in a shish gesture, then she just ducks off, never to be seen again. I was in middle school at a friend's sleepover. Her parents were very strict, her siblings got pulled out of public school to go to a Catholic school, were homeschooled in high school, and they scared the hell out of me. Anyway, it was probably like 11 p.m. at this sleepover, and her mom hesitantly let us watch the Disney movie asterisk scene in, girl of the 21st century asterisk. I laughed at a part, and even though her parents were awake, they came into the living room to scold me for being too loud. Not long after, I took a drink of water, got a little strangled, and started coughing. They called my parents after 11 p.m. to come pick me up because I couldn't behave. They had no regard for them being asleep and having jobs to get to early in the morning, they wanted me out for laughing and coughing in the span of about 10 minutes. My parents never let me stay the night at her house again, and are still pissed at them for doing that almost 20 years later. This was when I was a teenager but for my Eagle Scout project, you had to have a proposal and get it through several levels of clearance. My proposal was very good. I was the only person in years to get through the initial level of clearance without having to revise it. Unfortunately at the district level, there was a stick in the mud who believed that he wasn't doing his job unless he rejected every proposal at least once. He rejected mine after an hour and a half of arguing, for not including, ladder safety measures. So I printed out a 150-page manual on ladders and put that in front of him. Unfortunately it was not the same guy so I didn't get to see his face. 
I told the other guy what happened when he asked why the proposal was so maskive. He thought it was hilarious. Edit. I had three levels of clearance. Scoutmaster, Board of Review and then District. This happened at the district level to be clear. When I went and told this story to other adults they all had trouble with this guy and hated him edit too, so I worked in a large scout summer camp for a few years and it taught me the importance of choosing the right troop. I saw so many different types of troops, several of which made me question my choice of troop. I think all of these horror stories emphasize that important choice. When I was young my mum was best friends with one of the neighbors down the street, who also had a boy the same age as me. As a result I played a lot with said boy and was encouraged to be best friends with him. Whenever my mum wasn't around though, his mum was a complete bitch to me. She would come out to where we were playing together and shout at me for some minor trivial thing. If we were both doing something bad only minorly bad, we were not bad kids, she would blame it all on me and never reprimand her son at all. This was all when I was like 7 to 10 years old and so I couldn't process it at all and had no idea how to react and it really got to me. I found out years later she was basically jealous because I was doing much better at school than her son and she wanted to take me down a peg. Ultimately the son and I ended up going to different secondary schools and drifted apart, which meant that fortunately I stopped having to interact with her. Our mums are still good friends and she has always been pleasant to me as an adult, she even did the flowers at my wedding, but even 30 years later I still keep her at arm's length because of how unfairly she treated me as a child. Preschool me wasn't sure if shaking hands should come after or before getting awarded a prize on stage. Adults snatched my prize out of reach to hull full of guffawing adults. Preschool me burst out in tears and was led off stage. Parent scolded me for making her look bad. I lived in China for a year when I was 17 18 and spent a good amount of time traveling and staying in hostels. One day I slept in, I was staying for free in a hostel that wasn't legally open yet so there were no outlets to charge my phone, so no alarm, and was just barely going to make it to the station in time for my train. Bear in mind, this was a 40-hour train that only ran once a day, and I didn't have the money for a new ticket. The taxi driver got to the end of the street which the station was on and turned to me. He said, it's 10 kue to drop you off here. If you want me to take you to the station entrance it's 50. I ended up paying because I needed to make that train but I was upset and furious. I have met some of the kindest, most selfless people in China, but like anywhere in the world there are some absolute pendus heads too. Grounded me for leaving a hanger on the dryer then extended it for reading while grounded then further for sleeping when told I can't read. Shit still pisses me off years later. My swimming teacher promised me a candy bar if I jumped off the board when I couldn't swim and when I did they said they forgot, but I saw them eating one in the lounge. I was five and I was betrayed. Another thing that swim teacher did instead of teach me to swim was to try and teach the group how to keep their eyes open underwater and see. We all had goggles and had to take them off to do this. Also I didn't learn to swim there I ended up learning at a hotel on vacation when my sister taught me like a year later. Had a teacher in kindergarten threatened to expel me because I was sick and didn't show up the day before. She put me on the spot in front of the whole class telling me not to lie and that she'd call the principal. I cried in front of the whole class not knowing what to do. Apparently she wanted to win some attendance award and thought confronting a child was a good idea. Like bruh I was f king 5. Still salty on how she got away with it. My swimming teacher removed my inflatable armbands while swimming in a deep part of the pool because I was not paying enough attention out of excitement. My grade 2 science teacher taught us that there is no food we eat that doesn't come from plants. He gave the example of a cow, it eats grass, so it comes from plants. He offered $5 to anyone who could find anything that people eat that didn't come from plants and said no one had ever claimed it. We all went home and thought about it. Kids were saying things like marshmallows, ice cream, candy. I put my hand up and answered, salt. He was quiet for a moment and admitted that I was correct, and no one had ever thought about that before not even him, and that millions of people around the world eat salt every day. But he refused to give me the five dollars. 
edit to stop the butt mushrooms but algae comments an organism that feeds on decayed organic matter or on the waste products of other organisms that feed on decayed organic matter would still fall under the umbrella of without plants they wouldn't have anything to eat rule he had set up i didn't know about the algae and didn't consider it a food when i was in grade two but I had actually thought about mushrooms, and a kid did suggest them, but I knew that even mushrooms wouldn't have food if plants didn't exist. I could have mentioned any mineral, but I mentioned only the one we regularly ate. The lesson was on the food chain, and how important plants were to our survival, that we would have nothing at all to eat if they didn't exist. You know, other than salt.